So, in the previous video, we had actually seen the movement of water and minerals through the soil into the root and then from the root into the xylem. So, logically speaking, the next part is the movement of water and minerals up the xylem. Now, the movement of water and minerals up the xylem is going to be a little bit confusing. Um, and I can't talk about how water and minerals move up the xylem before talking about the movement of water in the leaf and out of the leaf. So if we follow the sequence, we are supposed to do number one, two, three, four, and then number five. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do number one, number two, and then I'm going to skip to number four and five first. Okay, and then finally, I'll talk about the movement of water and minerals up the xylem. Uh, it will make more sense when we look at uh, that particular video later. So without wasting any time, what we have to do is we want to see how the water and minerals move in the leaf and how water in particular will diffuse out of the leaf through transpiration. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm showing you here a cross section of a leaf, as you can see there, and we are going to magnify a specific part of that leaf, which I have um, bordered in a pink box or a pink rectangle. So within the pink rectangle, I'm going to draw out all the cells that I can find within that particular area of the cross section. The first layer that I'm drawing are the epidermal cells. You remember, they, are, they make up the outermost parts of the cells of the leaf. And that orange color part is known as the cuticle. Then we have those cells, which are the palisade mesophyll cells, which are special types of parenchyma tissue. We have the xylem and phloem. We have the spongy mesophylls. Um, and also, I'm just going to draw out another layer of epidermis because the leaf has two layers of epidermis, which are the upper and lower epidermis. But for a lot of leaf species, they also have this special type of cells at the lower epidermis. And these particular cells are known as the guard cells. And the guard cells function is to actually control the opening and closing of the stoma. Stoma is just the Greek word, which means opening. That's what it means, actually. So uh, when you see the word stoma, it's just like a hole that connects the inside of the leaf to the outside of the leaf, which is the atmosphere. So first thing first, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do the water and minerals move out of the xylem. Because remember, the xylem vessels were transporting the water and minerals from the root all the way to the leaves. So naturally, the water and minerals are in the xylem right now, as I'm highlighting in blue. So how do they go out of the xylem? Remember, the entirety of the xylem walls are not lignified. Certain parts of the xylem walls actually have this weird green color line that I'm drawing there, known as um, the pits, which are the cellulose walls. And the cellulose walls, they are permeable to water and minerals. So the arrow you can see over there is the water and minerals are just moving out through the pits out of the xylem vessels into the leaf cells, which are your parenchyma tissues made up of the spongy mesophyll cells and also the palisade mesophyll cells. Water usually leaves the xylem vessels through osmosis or sometimes they just get absorbed into the cell wall. So once the water and minerals move into the leaf by passing through the pits of the xylem vessel, the second thing that actually needs to happen is, remember, the water and minerals can actually commit to one pathway where they just move through the cell walls of the plant cells, which I've highlighted in purple, or sometimes they'll just pass through the intercellular spaces, which are the spaces between the cells. This is known as the apoplast pathway, or in another pathway, they can actually cross through the cell surface membrane and the vacuole and enter another plant by crossing through the other cell surface membrane, which I've highlighted in orange. Well, I think it's orange. It looks orange. It looks beige. Yeah, whatever. Okay. And that pathway is known as the Simplas pathway. So water and minerals move along the mesophyll cells via the apoplast or Simplast pathway. 
If you need a little bit of revision as to what the APO Plus and SIM Plus pathway are, you can actually go back to the... I'm just going to show this particular image here as to what the APO Plus and SIM Plus pathway actually correspond to, right? So it's the same. The APO Plus and SIM Plus pathway in the roots are the same as the APO Plus and SIM Plus pathway in the leaf, in terms of definition at least. So once the water and minerals move through the mesophyll cells, now here's where something very important happens. Notice that I'm actually drawing out blue colored dots in the mesophyll cell wall. This part is very important, mesophyll cell wall. When the water molecules are in the mesophyll cell wall, as I've highlighted in pink over there, if the temperature is adequate enough, it will break the hydrogen bonds connecting the water molecules together. And in this case, what will happen is the water molecules will start to evaporate into the airspace. And when the water molecules evaporate into the airspace, they will form something called water vapor. This is an extremely important process that happens in the leaf where water molecules evaporate from the mesophyll cell wall. Please be particular when you say cell wall. You cannot just say water evaporates from the mesophyll cells. That will be wrong. The reason why that's wrong is because now, look at this cell here that I'm drawing. I'm showing you those dots where those water molecules are in the cytoplasm, okay? And also dots where the water molecules are in the mesophyll cell wall. The water molecules in the cytoplasm are too far away to evaporate into the airspace because they are not next to the airspace. But the water molecules in the cell wall finds it easy to be evaporated for the very simple reason that they are directly next to the airspace. So that is an extremely significant point. When you mention in the exam, you have to say that the water evaporates from the mesophyll cell wall. Oh my God, I feel like a broken record repeating myself over and over and over again. So that's an important point. So once the water actually evaporates from the mesophyll cell wall, they are just diffusing through the air space of the leaf, okay, those empty space within the leaf. And if the stoma is open, what will happen is the water diffuses out through the stoma. And that process is known as transpiration, where water vapor diffuses from an area of higher water vapor concentration inside the leaf to a lower water vapor concentration out of the leaf, down the concentration gradient. Now, of course, then I'll ask my students, is transpiration a good or bad thing? Transpiration can be a bad thing because what exactly is happening is the plant is losing water, right? It's an unavoidable process. You might think that, oh, well, very simple. If, if the plant wants to avoid transpiration, all it has to do is just close the stoma. But plants can't afford to close the stoma all the time because they do need carbon dioxide to enter the leaf so that the palisade cells and the uh, spongy cells can undergo photosynthesis. So transpiration is an unavoidable consequence of gas exchange. And with that being said, we are actually done with the movement of water and minerals in the leaf and also the movement of water vapor out of the leaf through transpiration.